At the recent 2020 Hot Chips conference, Microsoft did a presentation on the Xbox Series X system architecture and they revealed a little bit more information about the Xbox Series X, but also they revealed some more information on the AMD next generation Radeon graphics cards that are due out at the end of the year. So um, I've got an article here from Tom's Hardware, so let's take a look at that and then uh, we'll come back and discuss. So in the Tom's Hardware article, they noted that they finally showed off the APU die for the Xbox Series X and as you can see there it's an entire system on a chip you have the GPU here in green and that takes up about 47.5% of the die itself the entire die is uh, 360 millimeters squared so the GPU is roughly about 170 square millimeters and uh, we have here in the orange the uh, CPU and these are 4 core 8 thread CPUs and there's two of them making 8 cores and 16 threads and on the outside we have the GDDR6 memory so with Tom's Hardware's article um, they've said that, that that GPU section is not surprisingly massive the full chip is 360 millimeter squared with 15.3 billion transistors Doing some quick image analysis, the GPU takes up roughly half of the die, 47.5% if you want a more precise estimate. Now the interesting thing here is that it kind of reveals how powerful the next generation AMD Navi 2X is going to be if you compare it to the previous generation. So if you compare the GPU information from the previous generation, the Navi 10, to the Navi 2X information for the Xbox Series X, uh, then you can work out roughly what the performance difference is uh, going from one generation to the next in terms of the architecture. And here we've got Navi 10, which is 251 millimeter squared, and the Xbox Series X is 170 millimeter squared, and the Navi 10 was about 10 teraflops, and now we're getting 12 teraflops for 170 millimeter squared. So if you do the math, it works out to be about 70% difference. And I think that's one of the reasons why we are seeing Nvidia put out GPUs, at least going by the current rumors anyways, that they're putting vastly better GPUs than they did last generation between um, GDX10 and RTX20, um, which is one of the main reasons why they did a uh, midterm upgrade with the RTX 20 supercards. Uh, so this is pretty huge and I think we kind of knew that already because there were rumors that AMD were going to have a 72 compute unit graphics card and if you did the math on that that would have been about 16 to 17 teraflops which is kind of where um, the 3080 is supposed to land in terms of performance. Now we have another interesting slide here and it goes into the cost of the die itself and uh, let's just run through this. So they say the Xbox One had a die cost of a, a dollar or one X basically and we know uh, from if we look online we can see the Xbox One with the bill of materials that die probably cost around $110 uh, given uh, estimates from uh, back then. And the Xbox One X was dollar minus, so it's going to be roughly about $100 as well. The Xbox One X was dollar plus, and if you think about it, uh, the Xbox One X did not sell with the Kinect device. So I'm assuming they probably just uh, used the Kinect money uh, to put it into their die cost, and everything else is more or less roughly about the same. That's why they sold it for the same price, $499. So I, I'm guessing uh, for the Xbox One X, uh, the die cost would probably be around maybe $170 to $200 for the die cost, and that's why it has dollar plus. And now we get to the Xbox Series X, so dollar plus plus would have to be about $250 to $300. Now, that tells me that the, the whole system it, uh, would probably cost around Four hundred fifty to five hundred dollars. Now there have been reports that the Xbox Series X has um, a bill of materials about four hundred fifty dollars, and 
this kind of uh, t tells me that they're in the right ballpark. Now this is really interesting because um, this doesn't give Microsoft a whole lot of room to maneuver in terms of their launch console price because uh, if they were to go $499 then they wouldn't really make anything off it but I think it makes more sense to get the console out there into people's hands and then let them buy content on the system and make money that way um, without the system they can't actually do that uh, there's no way for them to um, buy games and Microsoft couldn't sell these people any games. Now if it's going to be $450 to $500 I feel as though Microsoft probably won't take the price cut to make it $399 and I don't think they would go $599 because they are just too far behind PlayStation 5 at the moment. So. I think those two things were the most interesting things out of the uh, Microsoft presentation. They do go um, and discuss things like uh, ray tracing, but it's hard to actually quantify all of that um, without something to compare it to. So I'll leave a link in the description below and you can check the rest of that presentation out uh, for yourself. Um, but let me know in the comments what you think, firstly about how AMD and their Navi 2X cards, will they compete with NVIDIA for the next generation? And also, um, what do you think about the Xbox Series X price? Um, do you think it will be $499 or $599? Or do you think it could even be $399? But we roughly know what the cost of it is. It's going to be, um, or the bill of materials, it's going to be about $450 to $500. Okay, so um, if you like this video, please click on uh, the like button, help us and uh, help us grow the channel and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.